guys welcome back to my channel where the gnomes live this is sharon oyella and today we're going to be turning a vintage suitcase into a little dollhouse and this video is going to be in a few parts because there's a lot of information to take in it's not difficult i think anyone can do this and i'm going to walk you through everything that i did in this suitcase so you can see i have wooden floors in there and i also have a storage compartment at the bottom here it's hinged as well and it has magnets in there to help it keep it closed. And over here I have a pull-out floor. I added a little light in the fireplace that I can access from underneath the floor. All right guys, before we get started, I have to tell you that this is a one-off project for me. I've never done a project out of a suitcase before, so I was learning as I went along. I also changed my mind a few times, so you're gonna see some things in the video that look a little weird, but I'm gonna walk you through everything that I did. Okay, so when I first started, these floors actually just went flush with the suitcase, and then I later changed my mind and added this extension. And the extension part will be in part two of this video series. In this video, I'm going to show you how I prepared the suitcase, cut out the windows, how I wallpapered the inside, how I installed the floors, and also how I did this compartment lid here with the hinge. I'll also be installing the lights in this video and showing you how I put the plug in through the side of the suitcase. In this video, I'm using cardboard, masking tape, three different glues, so glue wall, tacky glue, and E6000. I'm also using twine. I have thicker twine and a thinner twine, an emery board for sanding, some paint, an old book, scissors and X-Acto knife. I am using a Dremel with this little attachment here to cut out my windows, but if you don't have a Dremel, you can use an X-Acto knife. I also used a big drill to get through my floor because I lit up the dollhouse. If you don't have a drill, you can work at it with some other sort of tool, like a nail maybe, and then work at it and get it big enough for your lights to go through. And I also ended up using a few of these little button magnets. I think it's real important to have a fan also to help dry your materials as you're working. And I'm also using these uh, LED strip lights that I got off Amazon. They come in different lengths, so make sure that you get the shorter length possible uh, for your suitcase. And the glass in my windows is actually plastic off of a tomato package when I got my tomatoes in. And the window frames, you can use anything, uh, cardboard, popsicle sticks, coffee stir sticks, or any little pieces of wood. All right, with all that out of the way, let's get started. And remember, there are detailed timestamps in the pinned comment below. All right, so the first thing I have to do, of course, is remove all of the interior lining. And this was relatively easy because it was actually falling apart anyway. Uh, the only part that was a little bit difficult here was just the um, parts that were stuck with the glue underneath. And I had to take a scraper and scrape all that off. And I also didn't show this on video because that video clip got lost for some reason. But after I had pulled all of this stuff out and threw it out and scraped the um, case itself, I did wash it down with hot water and soap and a little bit of Javix just to, you know, eliminate any, any uh, dirt lingering in there. And the next step I did was drill a hole in the bottom corner, and this will be for my lights. And I made the hole just big enough for the light. So I had to like kind of squeeze it in there, but not, not too much. Okay. And I'm using the E6000. I put a, a good size bead all the way around here. And then push it through. And then I'm going to take a little piece of twine and I'm going to run it around that bead of glue that's still sitting there. And just need, need a little bit of help with my finger um, to get it to stick down. Once that was dry enough to the touch, then I added uh, tacky glue all the way around. And now I'm going to add another piece of twine that I've completely covered in tacky glue. And I'm going to wrap this around as well. And on the other side where it's exiting the hole, I'm just using the X-Acto knife to cut the canvas that was frayed around it. And then I put my bead of E6000 around there. And around that bead of glue, I also added a little piece of twine. Okay, and that just adds so much support. Uh, once the, the glue is totally cured, that part of the uh, light socket is very, very strong. Okay, and because I'm working on it before it's totally cured, I just added a little piece of masking tape there to hold it in place while I install the lights. 
and installing them is just a matter of sticking them in the place that you want to stick them and then there are cut lines that you're allowed to cut with the scissors. Next we're going to be working on the windows but a couple things to keep in mind. I chose flat surface windows. Uh, it's no deeper than the edge of my suitcase. In case I want to do another suitcase in the future I can actually stack them without having to worry about windows in the way. But if you want to do like a bay window, I do have a tutorial here on YouTube. These are made out of cardboard. So I have a four bay window and I also have a three bay window. And the link to that tutorial will be in the pinned comment below. So my floor on the inside goes from from the top of the case to the first floor, it goes eight inches. So I drew a line across my suitcase at eight inches. That gives me about two inches where the windows start. That way I'm not looking into uh, the floor line. I'm actually looking through the window and the floor line is below that. So that's how I came up with those measurements. So just keep that in mind when you're designing yours. And using white chalk and a ruler, I'm going to mark off where my floor is going to be sitting on the inside. So eight inches from the top of my case and below that line, another eight inches. And to help me visualize where my windows are going to go, I just used cardboard and then played around with placements until I was happy with what I saw. So then I just decided to go with your basic two on top, two in the middle. And I am using a Dremel to cut these out, but if you don't have a Dremel, you can use an X-Acto knife. It'll take longer, of course, but if you keep going over the same cut mark, uh, you eventually get through. Uh, these suitcases aren't very thick. The wood isn't very thick. Okay, and then you want to sand down anything that needs sanding. I used to use an emery board. And then on the inside edge of the windows, I am painting them black. Uh, when I install my windows, I don't want to look through there and see the edges of the suitcase on the inside. Okay, and I'm going to hold this down with little pieces of masking tape. And then I used some wood that I had in my stash. You can use popsicle sticks or coffee sticks, coffee stir sticks. Uh, these ones had a little bit of um, a gloss to them, so I just was sanding them down. And then I painted them antique white because that was the closest color to the edge of my suitcase. And I did cut a little bit of an angle here just to give a little bit more interest on top of the window so they're just not straight rectangles. And I'm going to be using uh, tacky glue to glue these down. Tacky glue is really great because once it doesn't take very long to grab on, so you don't have to worry about things sliding around too, too much after you get them down. After about 20 minutes or so, you can pretty much pick up the suitcase and those will stay put. And I'm using some sticks that I had on hand here. And I found that this part here, if you cut them a little bit too long, and you have to kind of force them in, it's better, okay? So I just cut them out a little bit too long. I used my emery board to sand both, um, both ends. And I'm just measuring, I'm using the window next to it to measure my, my vertical uh, stick there so they're the same length. And a little dot of tacky glue on each end. Do the middle, the vertical one first. And then the horizontal piece. You have to kind of fight to get it in there, and that's what I wanted. And then slide it into position, make sure it's all straight, and let it dry. Okay, on the inside of the lid, I'm going to be put using book pages. And to attach them, I'm using Elmer's Glue All. You can use any white PVA glue. If it's too thick, put a little bit of water in it. It'll make it easier to brush on. And I'm using old book pages. You want to make sure that you tear all four sides. Very important to tear all four sides. It'll stick better if you do it that way. And so you just brush on the glue. I was doing this with the case standing up, but then later I found out it was much better if I'd laid it down so the glue wasn't dripping anywhere. But yeah, you just um, brush on your glue, lay the pages in the glue, and then brush glue over top the pages. And you just keep layering them until the whole um, pieces, whole surface is covered. Just make sure you don't put any dry pages over dry pages. And along here, you can see the fabric was sticking up there, so you just want to make sure that you glue that down before you put any paper over top. And then once that was all dry, on the inside I am doing the black edge again, just to cover up any uh, pieces of the book pages that I stuck down. I don't want to see those if I look through the window. And now I'm using coffee stir sticks, and again I painted them with the antique white. And these are just your basic frame. Because I am putting curtains here, so I'm not too worried about how they look so much. So you just your basic frame. And tacky glue again. And those are full bottles of glue that I'm using as little weights. They do a great job. Hold the corners down, make sure everything is got full contact. All right, so now I'm gonna be working on the floors and all my floors are two pieces of cardboard that I sandwiched together. 
So of course you want to square that up best you can. Take off any stickers or anything. And I'm using Elmer's glue all here. And it's important to get the glue over the entire surface. Okay, so I'm using a brush to do that. And then I'm going to hold this together with masking tape to make sure it doesn't slide apart while it's drying. Putting it in between two pieces of wax paper just to protect my books or my floor from the glue. And then I'm going to weigh these down with books and I'm also going to add a brick. Uh, it's best to lay them underneath something really heavy so the cardboard as it's drying it will dry completely flat. And I'm going to leave those dry for about an hour or so before I take the uh, books and the brick off. So now I'm working on the bottom floor in the storage compartment and this is four inches from the bottom of the case to the top of the line. And I'm just going to make sure that this line that I just drew is level. So I'm going to actually use a little level. I'm going to just dry fit this in here. And you can see it's, it's cut in a way that um, I have to kind of force it in. And I, I wanted it that way so I can work like this. So it's not sliding all over the place when I'm trying to get it glued in and stuff like that. So Again, just checking out the level levelness of that line. So now I can run a bead of tacky glue over along all three sides and place this in. Double checking. Now I can just push it into position and at the very bottom I'm going to run a bead of tacky glue and inside of that bead of tacky glue I'm going to lay down a piece of twine. This will act as a brace. It also adds a lot of extra strength. Once that uh, twine is dry it's super strong. My floors, I can throw a brick on top, like just drop the brick on top and they stay put. <laughs> All right, so once you get the twine in there, another bead of tacky glue over top, but I'm gonna use my finger just to make sure there's full contact between the twine and the glue. And I'm doing all three sides. So tacky glue, twine, tacky glue. And here I'm gonna be adding some more book pages. Uh, when you're doing it this way, make sure that your book pace it pages are wrapping around corners like I'm doing here. That just adds a lot of extra strength for your floor as well. And again, make sure that you're not putting dry pages over dry pages. You want to make sure everything that you lay down is going over a layer of glue. And then brush your glue on top. And like I said in the beginning, I was kind of winging my way along. Um, after this was dry, I decided I was going to add in a little wall to make a compartment for my electrical cord. And I could have done that first, saved me some time, but oh well. <laughs> I'm just going to sandwich these two pieces together. And because it's a small section of cardboard that I'm sandwiching together, I'm not worried about it warping. So I'm just gonna hold that together with masking tape. And then I'm gonna do uh, all three sides with tacky glue, glue that in. And then my book pages over top is gonna make sure that those that little wall stays put and it never warps. And of course, every time I am finished a little job like this, I will set a fan on it to help it dry a lot faster. And again, you want to make sure that you're wrapping around corners and edges to make everything one solid piece. All right, so if you use strip lights like I did, you're going to want to put a wall in front of those lights so you don't see the strip um, when you open up the case. And it also creates a barrier uh, between the glaring light as well. And it just adds a, a really nice effect. So I decided to use twine. You can use whatever you want to use. So a bead of tacky glue, and this is my thicker twine. And then um, lay that down in the bead. And then you want to run a bead of tacky glue along the edge to make sure there's full contact between the twine and the suitcase. And then I found after I did this one string here, it wasn't tall enough. So after that was dry, you can see my fan on it there, I added another bead of tacky glue and a piece of twine over top that. So it doubled itself. And that was the perfect height to cover my lights with, without covering the lights, you know what I mean? Like I, it was a perfect height to add a wall in front of my lights. And again, once this glue is dry and the twine is dry, it's so strong. I was really, really happy that I decided to go this, this way. It was so much easier too to, to get the twine where you wanted it to go because it's so bendable. And keep in mind if you're going to do the same design as me, how far my twine is sitting back and that is for um, 
the allowance of my lid that I'm going to close here. So my lid will stop at the twine but still be flush with the suitcase because I have to think about the other side of the lid closing where my wood floor is. They meet up together so you have to allow for that space. And I did end up using some magnets to help keep my compartment lid closed when it's not in use. You can use Velcro. Magnets are a choking hazard and very dangerous for small children so make sure if you use any that um, you're using them in a safe way. So I used E6000 to glue mine in and that seemed to be working really wonderful. They're, they're really stuck in there. But here you can listen to how it snaps together here. So let's recap how I made the compartment lid. It's two pieces of cardboard. Of course you want to remove any tape or stickers and then you're going to glue those two pieces together. Add the masking tape so they don't slip apart when you're weighing them down. On top of wax paper, wax paper over top that to protect your floors or your books. Bunch of heavy books on top. If you have a brick, place one on top as well. The heavier the better and you want to leave this for at least an hour to make sure you don't have any warping issues. And the next thing I wanted to mention before we get started is I did add this extension to my floor above the compartment lid and I'm going to show you how I did that in the next video. I forgot to film the part of um, gluing these two magnets in but I just put in the E6000 on top of my twine and then set the magnets in there. And now I'm going to, I covered up the magnets with black paint, you just saw me put black paint on there. And that's so I know exactly where I want the other two magnets to go. Okay, now that I have the paint on there, I can cut around that with my X-Acto blade. And you just want to cut through the first layer of cardboard, not both, because you want to sink the magnet just so it's flush with the cardboard, the one layer. So you have as much contact between the two magnets as possible. And make sure that you have the right sides glued in. I almost had a mishap there um, by gluing in the wrong side. Okay, generous amount of E6000, stick your magnet in there and let it set. You want to leave it for a couple of hours before you test it out and it won't cure for a full 24 hours. All right, and I did end up with a finger hole here, but my original design was using this pull tab, which I'm going to leave in the video in case you find it helpful. The reason why I pulled out the pull tab is because I later decided to add this floor right here. And when I closed up the suitcase, that floor would hit my pull tab. So I had to remove that and add in the finger hole. So we'll keep that part in the video just in case you find the pull tab part helpful. I just put a hole in there with my awl and now I'm pushing the knob through. I'm going to leave it sitting up a little ways so I can actually grab it. Now I'm going to open up the other sides here and then hold them down with masking tape and then I'm going to do my book pages over this. It's going to be gluing a small section of paper at a time and then let it dry. I did help it dry a little bit with my hair dryer and then you can see my fan sitting there as well. So I did the middle first and leave that dry and then you can do both sides. Now I did do one layer of paper over the magnets and that will you know ensure that they never come out of there also they're hidden and one layer of paper was okay. I don't think two layers would be good, but just one layer was a-okay and they're working great. And there was no warping issue with this at all because I did dry this properly like these cardboard before I put on the book pages. But once the um, paper was dry, the, the ends of your boards might be a little bit warped. You just have to straighten them out with your hands and it'll be fine. Okay, so then after, like I said, I pulled this out, I used my pliers and this is how it looked when I pulled it out and I just put in a finger hole. So now I'm going to hinge this using fabric. I'm going to use three pieces of fabric and I just made uh, three band-aid like strips. I'm going to put um, them evenly spaced here. Now I'm going to glue the one side first. So the one side with tacky glue and making sure I have tacky glue over the entire surface of that one side and gluing all three pieces down just on the one side. I'm going to let that dry. It doesn't take very long, about 20 minutes. Then I do the other side. That way I can, you know, kind of pull on it or anything and I don't pull it out of position. So the glue is going right to the edge of my lid. You can see there and right from the edge there to edge. So the very middle, of course, does not have glue on it. And here you can see me putting in my electrical cord into that little compartment there and I'll close the lid and everything is working wonderful. I was really happy with how this turned out. 
All right, so now we're going to do the wallpaper. You can use any paper that you want to use. I'm using scrapbooking paper. This is double-sided scrapbooking paper, so it's it's thick and it's high hiding. That's why I like using this stuff. Um, it's going to hide any imperfections behind the paper. And of course, you want to make sure that you're um, spreading the glue out evenly and across the entire surface. So I found it best to use a paintbrush. And you want to pre-cut your pieces, of course. This one side um, was having trouble sticking down, so I was just helping it with a ruler and some clamps. And then I put in the top. And that will bring us to the end of this video, guys. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I did the wooden floors. And that should be popping up on the screen. And if it's not popping up there, you can look in the pinned comment below, and you'll find the other links that you need. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.